Your Majesty, King. Your Majesty, the distinguished guests who are here this afternoon, my especially the Majesty, our President, for the cultural leaders in Africa. I am not going to make a long speech. I just wanted to appreciate it. This type of arrangement for inviting us from all parts of Africa. We are now editors. But I want only to leave one message here that as cultural leaders, we are having a population of younger generation, especially in Africa. In the first 10 world nations, Africa takes the precedence of having younger generation. But there is a problem of us elders we are not manufacturing, I'm using manufacturing, leaders who are taking, taking over from us. We are only talking and we leave ourselves here. So it is a challenge to you as leaders and especially our presidents of all traditional leaders in Africa to ensure that you mobilize us and we work on a mindset of having leaders who are going to take this country, this Africa, to another level. The, the world is moving at a supersonic speed, but our younger generation has been left to me to be concerned. So that is my only message to all leaders across the region, and especially for us from East Africa, we should consolidate this type of arrangement of coming together as leaders and we ensure that we work on the issue of the youth. It is a very big problem. People are looking at it with... No, they won't see me. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, I thought it would be uh, bad manners to, to kick the back, <laughs> His Majesty. Almost I've all actually summarized my message is to the, our cultural leaders in Africa and, and the politicians. The message today is about the future leaders of this nation, of this war, of this country. The future leaders of Africa. We as the leaders and especially elders, we are not investing much in the youth. Uh, if you ask now the majesty here, I don't know how many young guys is nurturing to take over from him. I don't know whether there is a deliberate uh, policy which is catering for that leadership gaps we are having in Africa. So my only appeal is to us as leaders that we start now. The, the world is moving at a supersonic speed and for us as young children in Africa are not moving at that pace. So it is us now, leaders, to, to come together, to come with a, a very uh, comprehensive program to ensure that we translate our nations into a more productive youth because we have a real human resource in terms of younger people. Uh, one thing I've observed here in Kenya, when big people are introduced, they don't clap. I don't know whether you don't you don't like them. They were introducing leaders and nobody was appreciating. So that means there's a problem. Why don't you clap when they introduce your king? What do you lose? That alone tells me there's a problem. There's a big problem. And the leaders are to blame. They also sit and think that that's good. We must style up and ensure that 
character, discipline is instilled in the population. Without that, even if you talk of peace and unity, there's nothing. We must be disciplined. We, much of our resources go on only one word. In discipline. We have army because of indiscipline. Police because of indiscipline. Judiciary because of indiscipline. Parliament because of discipline. Why should we spend all this money instead of using it to other productive issues like health, water, electricity, good roads, but we spend money on only one word, in discipline, and it starts with us leaders. I am speaking this from the bottom of my heart. I am happy that my Majesty invited me. I bring greetings from Uganda. I have a road in my city called Mumias. I have a, a, a secondary school called Nabongo. So I am part and part of this city. I thank you. And now I have the pleasure to invite the President of the Forum